All right, in this video, we're going to look at a little bit of JavaScript. And for those of you, this is for those of you who um, have seen a website and you were like, dang, I wish I could get some information off that website and have it update for me. You can do that. I don't care if you're if you're not interested in Ethereum. Um, it's a cryptocurrency. I don't care if you're not interested in that. Trust me, this will be it's one of the most common ways that I use to pull information from a website, especially if it's just one little tidbit of information. In this case, I'm curious about this price right here. Um, this is going to involve Tasker, JavaScriptlets, and a little bit of DOM. Not a lot. Um, we're going to take it, you know, baby steps here um, because, <laughs> you know, I'm not a JavaScript expert, but uh, I'm able to get this information and I want to share it with you all. Uh, don't, even if you're not interested in this, hang out. Uh, trust me, you may run across something and be like, hey, I want to get that from that website. I want to show it in task or I want to show it on my custom live wallpaper. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. One of the ways, one of the most common ways that I do that. Also coming up later on this week, uh, we're going to look at some camera shutters that you can see right here. And uh, that is a request that's coming up, you know, various ways of displaying that. If you did notice, that is two different types of animations that I have going on there. So uh, stay tuned for later on this week for when that animation tutorial is coming. But this video is about the DOM. So um, Ethereum, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a cryptocurrency. Back in April of this year, it was like 50 bucks a coin, and now it's up to $350. It is insane what it's doing. I hope it's not in a bubble. But anyway, I want to keep up with this price right here. So what I can do is I can right-click, and this works with any website. Go to a website that you're trying to get some information from, right-click on it, and click on Inspect. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit more work than what this is going to take, but this is a motivating factor to kind of push you in that direction of getting information from a website. So if you're using Google Chrome, um, if you're not, I highly recommend you use it. Uh, when you click on inspect, it brings up uh, uh, the document. This is the HTML document, and you can navigate through it and stuff like that. But the reason why I recommend using inspect is because if you right-click on an item and you click on inspect, it'll take you directly to that item. For example, if I come here to 34789 and I go to inspect, it's going to pull that one up right there. So the one I want is this one here. Now, one of the first things I look for when I'm trying to navigate the DOM, the document object model, is I look for a class. There are other ways of doing it. Again, I'm not a JavaScript expert, but this is what works for me. And notice that this 348.52, which is that price, has a class, and that class is RP. So um, I'm going to be able to remember that, but typically what I do is I copy that class name, and then I go over to the console in uh, the developer tools uh, for Google Chrome. And since this thing here, this elements, all this stuff is a document, that's going to be the first thing you want to do to start this thing off in the console to make sure your code's going to work. Sometimes this will not work in Tasker, but this one will, trust me. So document dot, and this is our JavaScript, we want to get elements by class name because that class was called RP. So get elements by class name, you have to type it in exactly like that. In parentheses, you can do double quotes or single quotes. I'm going to do RP. I'm going to close it up. And for right now, I'm just going to stop right there with a semicolon. So when I press enter there, um, it turns out there's more than one class or more than one uh, piece with a class name RP. Notice there's six of them. One, it's that 348. Notice they're highlighting. As I click on this little arrow here and I bring them all up, it's highlighting where they are. The one that I want is this first one. And as long as this website does not change the way the document is set up, I can always go to this first class RP. If they change the class name, then the code won't work. But, I mean, few and far between will that happen uh, with websites. It does happen, but not in this case. Um, I've been using this one for quite a while now. So span.rp, I want the zero one. Notice that index of zero, that is very important. So I'm gonna click on that, and luckily, sometimes you can get the information super fast, in this case, the inner text. Notice the inner HTML is the same thing. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use inner text, because sometimes the inner HTML, you can run across where it shows a little bit, something a little bit different, but in this case, it is the same. It doesn't matter which one I use. But once you find what you want to use, it will require more navigation sometimes. I'm going to save that for future videos. I'm just trying to motivate the fact here. But once you find the information that you want, go to this little stuff here, all this stuff in purple that you see. Right click on it. Click Copy Property Path. I'm going to minimize this. 
and I'm going to bring back up that same line of code that I have up here and now it's right there and I'm going to come after that parentheses and I'm going to paste that property path. Now let's talk about what this uh, is telling us. Well, we're doing document. That's taking this entire document. We're going to get elements by class name, RP. Well, that's what's going to pull up this stuff. And let me minimize this. So boom. So when we do document.getElementsByClassNameRP, just this part of the code, just what I've highlighted here, it's going to pull up all these. But when we put that zero there, which is the uh, property path that I copied over, it's going to look in that zero piece in that array. Think of it as a list of classes right here. So it's going to look at that index of zero. And then inside of that index zero piece, boom, we want to look for what? Enter text. So I'm clicking on zero. And if I go down to enter text, that's exactly what I want to get. So by me doing this, that line of code right there, I should pull up this price or whatever price it is right now. So 347.56. So if I refresh this, um, so we get 347.40 and notice my code went away. Well, what you can do is you can just press um, inside of the console, press the up arrow, it'll bring your code right back. And 347.40 is what we're seeing there. So this is what I want to use for the most part inside of Tasker. All right. Now, let me show you what I got going on inside of Tasker. I'm going to go to Ethereum price, and I'm just going to run this real quick, and let's see if we get the same price. Maybe you have noticed throughout the video this price has been changing, so 347.40 is what we got. And it's pulling that from this website, and it's using a similar code. Now, if you've seen some of my DOM videos in the past, which a lot of people don't watch them, but I get a lot of questions about getting stuff from websites, that's why I'm trying to take it, take smaller steps with you here. Um, not just diving full face first into uh, loops and all that crazy stuff. I'm building up to it. So inside of Tasker, I got a task created, and uh, the first action I'm doing is a HTTP GET, and I'm using the website which is the one I have here. And you can use whatever website you want to use. And notice this price just changed, um, but <laughs> I, I just noticed it changed as well. Uh, so ethereumprice.org, which is exactly what I have right here. And then I'm going to do a JavaScript. Loop. Now the difference here is that uh, this first part that we start off with, um, I've mentioned this in all of my DOM videos, type that in exactly like you see it, but basically it's going to take that document. Now you don't want to call this document. You want to call it doc or call it HTML. Don't call it document because it won't work because like document is one of those words that you can't use in JavaScript because document has a special name or a special use. So I just called it doc equals and then type in this code exactly like you see it new dom parser there is a space um, in between new and dom parser uh, type it in exactly like you see it and basically what it's doing is it's taking this uh, global this http get that i did it's taking it and it's going to allow me to do some javascript to do some dom parsing so to speak so type that in exactly like you see it and then the next thing i'm doing is i'm doing price equals now doc, notice my little code here is a little bit different. I'm going to save query selector for later. But notice I was getting the price. So what I want to do here is doc dot, think of this as document. That's what this is, is the document. And notice I have the word document over here in my console. I'm, so I'm going to copy this over right here. Now I'm not copying document dot because I already have doc dot. But I'm going to paste that right here. And basically, this code here is the same thing as this, except I'm missing document dot. I have doc dot. Get elements by class name RP, index of zero. That was that, uh, you know, that we had a list of different class names with RP. It was that first one, index is zero, and then dot enter text. And if I play this, um, we should still get, okay, so 347.40. Now, if I come back out of here and I run it here, we should get something updated. 349.25, boom, we have it right there. Let me close out of that because I'm done with that for right now. Let's refresh this. So it's still at 349.25, but as you can see, it is updating uh, fast. So how am I getting it to pop that up? That's that little alert that I have right there. I can block that out. And now if I do it, we're not going to see anything happen. See what I'm saying? Now, here is another thing. So 
all I've talked about here is get elements by class name and a little bit of navigation. There's more navigation to do sometimes to get the information that you want, but we'll save that for another video. Um, on a lot of websites, it's a matter of you getting to that particular class, maybe navigating through the class a little bit and getting an enter text or enter HTML um, or something like that. But like I said, it's more of that's coming up later. So what, what do you want to do with this thing? Um, do you want, so right now I'm not seeing anything when I run this. Notice if I click play, it's just playing it and it's done because I've taken that alert off. Well, you know, we have a variable right here. I have price equals, and then I have that line of code that I typed in the console with a little bit of changes there, you know, the doc dot. Well, if I try to come back into tasker right now and I try to uh, flash, a variable in tasker a way you define a, or a way you work with a variable in tasker is to use the percent key and if I try to flash that right now it's not going to work and this is one of the hurdles I had to get over notice it says percent price well <laughs> I want to see that variable that I've called price well the way to do that in your JavaScriptlet if you put the words var in front of your variable uh, you can typically, most of the time, show that variable now. So if I rerun this code, hopefully now instead of it showing percent price, it's going to show the actual price. And let's see what happens down here. Just like that, boom. And all it has to do with is um, I did a little bit of reading over at the Tasker. If you go to Google and type in Tasker JavaScript, it, it's a lot of reading, but uh, the word var is what allows it to be shown inside of Tasker. So with that, you know, what can we do with this thing? Whatever you want. You can start making scenes or what I'm going to show you now very quickly um, is to send it over to KOWP. And you can do a KOWP broadcast uh, task like I did in one of my more recent videos. Or since I already have this variable in Tasker now, I don't need to see that anymore. So I'm just going to cut that off. And I'm going to send this over to KLWP. So one of the quickest ways, since it's just a single thing I want to send over, I'm not sending over a long list of items, a KLWP send variable is just fine. So what do we want to send over? We want to send over, let's just say um, Ethereum ETH price is uh, percent price. Now you can actually leave off, I'm just going to send over percent price. How about that? Percent price is going to be whatever price it pulls from the website. Now what do we want to call that variable? What name do we want to give it? Um, this is what we're going to have to type in, in into the advanced editor in KOWP. I'm just going to call it uh, Ethereum. Okay. You can call it ETH, whatever you want to do, or whatever you're trying to send over. So I'm going to check that, and I have not run this yet. So let me go ahead and run that. Boom, boom, boom. So everything's getting sent over. We don't have anything flashing at us. Now, since I know I'm going to be using this in KLWP, I'm just going to go ahead and give it an icon because you have to do that. Uh, when You can do it when you're inside of KLWP as well. So let's just check that. Let's click out of here and let's go back to the home screen. So I'm going to go into KLWP and I just want to get this price real quick. <clears throat> and I'm just going to add a text item and I'm going to take that text item and I'm going to put it at the bottom of the screen just so we can see it and what I should be able to do now is broadcast for that tasker task that we just did so uh, broadcast tasker and then what was the name of it? Ethereum, E-T-H-E-R-E-U-M. Close it up, put a dollar symbol, boom, check it out, 348.40. And just in case this thing doesn't update, I'm going to show you how to get it to update as well. So I'm going to check. And now I have the Ethereum price. And we can come back here and, you know, we can say uh, ETH price is. And now we have it as a little sentence. Make it a little bit smaller. Now, what do we want to do else? What else do we want to do? We want to update this thing. So if I go and touch this word down here, if I go to touch and I add a touch to it, and I want to uh, launch a shortcut, and the shortcut is a task shortcut, and it's going to be Ethereum price. And I tell you what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and add one more thing. I'm going to add a quick flash 
just to let me know that ETH price has been updated. So that way when I run this thing, I can confirm that it has been updated. It's just gonna give me a quick flash across the screen. Um, since I have an icon, if you don't have an icon down here and you click this little button to apply that task, it will tell you that you need an icon, but I've already added one. So if I save that, go back to the home screen, the price has changed now. The price has changed. So what we should what should happen now is if I come to here and touch this, give it a second. ETH, whoops, ETH has been updated. That was just me holding down the mouse button. But look, 348.43, let's click it again and see uh, which one is more updated. Give it a second. So 348.43, let's see what we have right here. Look, see this updated before the website did, before it showed it here on the screen. I had to refresh it. So just like that, we have a... Uh, We've used a little bit of document object model, get element by class name, a little bit of uh, inner text. We've credited it in Tasker. We've shot it over to KOWP, and now we have it on our home screen. I recommend you go to some of your websites that you want to get information from and see if you can get elements by class name. Follow the, the little single quotes and uh, navigate that little those little arrows that I had in the console a little bit. Trust me, we're going to dive deeper into this with the looping and all that. But for now, there you have it. Um, that's one of the most common ways that I navigate the DOM. I get elements by class name. And that is it for this video. I hope it helped.